Hi, and welcome to The Hot Seat. I'm Hal Thompson, expert, and I'm coming at you straight out of my living room. My guest today is well known. His name is Arabian Prince. He's one of the founding members of NWA. Welcome to the show, Prince. Thanks for having me. Were you disappointed when your company, Northwest Airlines, merged with Delta? <laughs> you know what's funny? You mentioned that, man. A lot of people think NWA. I wish we owned Northwest Airlines. That probably would have been a dope thing, you know but uh, that's not us. Oh, well, in that case, uh, I have a multiple choice question for you. Since the release of NWA's song F Star Star K The Police in 1988, would you say that issues with the police have A, very much improved, B, somewhat improved, C, neither improved or worsened, D, somewhat worsened, or E, we still don't like the police? Uh, e, we still don't like the police. Now, I got some police that are friends of mine that I played golf with, they cool. But as far as what's going on right now, E. What is NWA's opinion of parking enforcers? Parking enforcer tried to hem me up one time when I was trying to put a quarter in somebody else's meter. He's like, is that your car? I'm like, no, but it's my quarter. I feel like 2020, many more people have a better understanding of NWA's message. What do you think caused this? Could it be that all the Hobby Lobby stores closed up two months ago? Or is it something else? I, I think it's the fact that we told them over 30 years ago and did nobody listen to us then. And uh, it's still going on to today. And now people are finally listening. And I don't think it's the Hobby Lobby stores. I think it had something to do with Ikea closing. People freaked out when they closed. Oh, maybe Ikea. it was more of the Ikea closing. Those uh, meatballs, man, people go crazy. You got your start in technology with ham radio. How did that come about? Um, my uncles and cousins were all in the military, so they were engineers, and they used to talk to each other on ham radios. And when they would come back from the military, I just saw this big-ass box with a microphone, and I started playing with it and, and started talking to people across the country and all over the place, man. And I, I feel like ham radio is a trustworthy pursuit. I was a little kid with a deep voice, so all the women thought I was older, and I really liked that part of it. I actually got my start uh, with ham, just just ham. Just plain old ham? Stacks. Do you like potted meat, or do you like Vienna sausage? I've never, I've never had Vienna sausage. Yeah, it's like these little toes in a can with like i'm not sure you're selling it toes in a can that's probably what it tastes like too i might know what toes taste like actually i heard that you started out at age 15 as dj prince and sold mixed tapes at school and then you got into producing at the same age yeah why were you such a late bloomer i started selling tapes at 12 or uh, ma masking tapes what were you selling masking tapes for? I was selling them to the other students. Tape what? They could tape each other up. What school did you go to? L uh, Luxembourg, Pennsylvania. If, if you came to school with some tape in Compton, they would tape you up. You think I would have got taped up? Yeah, you would have got taped up. Like They would have left you taped to the fence or something like that. That happened to me anyway, so it wouldn't, didn't really matter where I was. At least you made money. Can you tell us a little bit more, though, about when you first started out? I would try and make mixtapes, and that's how I would sell them at school. And I figured, well, I could DJ now. Well, I couldn't, but I thought I could, and I just naturally became a DJ at all the elementary schools and the high schools. I tried to become a, a DJ at one point, too. Did they tape you to a turntable? I was taped to several turntables and spun around. Yeah. I, it was more, I, I was DJ'd. Ah, you were DJ'd, yeah. Yeah, I had to make scratching sounds and, and then say things backwards. Oh, dude, I could take you on tour with me then. Next to my, well, when this COVID thing is over. I'd have to say things like... Or... I'm excited to be chatting with an Arabian prince. Usually it's just Nigerian princes who message me with amazing financial opportunities. Sometimes I'm able to help them out with their situations by depositing cash that I don't really need. Do Arabian princes make amazing opportunities happen as well? Yeah, we make bank, you know. I heard that you've worked on some video games. Well, I think one of the first games I ever worked on was like Leisure Suit Larry, and I worked on all the early Simpson games. King of the Hill, you know, a lot of stuff like that. And yeah, I've been working on games forever. Can you tell me about the manger baby? Oh my God, why'd you have to bring, how'd you find, how'd you find that one? Let me tell you about manger. See, now you didn't piss me off. When I was doing stuff for uh, Fox Interactive, we did this King of the Hill game, right? I guess her name was Luann. She 
was doing this little scene with these little puppets and she called them manger babies. The manger babies. Why did the game break? Like while we were testing and you know building this game, it was broken every time it got to manger baby. Manger babies. <laughs> and I had to listen to manger babies for like two weeks in a row. Manger babies, manger babies, manger babies. Until we got that fixed. So it was stuck in my head like manger baby song. I can't even watch it on TV when it comes on. I have my own special baby friend. She's kind of unforgettable as well. Um, should we be talking about that on Zoom? Sometimes I forget myself. I, I wanted to know what's your favorite video game right now? Dude, all right, I got you. Borderlands 3. They just came out with a new update, and as soon as I get off with you, I'm going in. Borderlands 3. What's your job? So I did start a new company um, with some partners called Covatech. We're actually building infrastructure and some software to help people get back into the workforce because of COVID-19. That's pretty good. Do you have COVID? I don't think I have COVID currently, but I'm looking forward to it. I heard that you have an Egyptian lover. You have to put the, he's the, or the. Oh, he's the Egyptian lover? The Egyptian lover. And he's a homie of mine that's a DJ, fellow music, you know, entrepreneur guy from back in the day we grew up together. And uh, he just put out a new uh, album called Pyramix Party. Pyramix Party? Yeah. I'll definitely, get, I'm going to get my hands on it. Yeah. I kind of wish I could have my own, the Egyptian lover. I can give you his number. Maybe he'd be my Egyptian lover as well. I don't know if he would like that too much. You have a sister? Really, I'd accept any sort of lover. Oh, uh, you don't have a lover? I have goats. Love the sheeps. I love sheeps. So here's something funny. You can go research this later. I used to be also with another group called Bobby, Jimmy, and the Critters. That was like a comedy rap group, kind of like Weird Al Yankovic. You know, we did a song called We Love the Sheep. Can you recite any lyrics? We love the sheep, 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 sheep. We love sheep, 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 sheep. We love the sheep, 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 sheep. We love sheep, 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 sheep. Sheep, sheep, sheep. You performed on Ministry's last album. How did that come about? Oh, wow. Um, Al Jorgensen from Ministry is a buddy of mine. And actually, we talked yesterday. And um, we're going back in the lab um, next week to put together some songs to talk about what's going on right now in the world. So people are going to hear you and Al Jorgensen. And then they're also going to hear you and Hal Thompson. Isn't that crazy? Al's and Hal's are helping you out. <laughs> yep, owls and howls. Owls yeah. and howls. My friends on Facebook and Twitter had a couple of questions for you. Yeah. Matt Johnson says, how far is too far? Not far enough. Uh-huh. You know where I want to go? I want to go to the place that the scientists keep hearing that signal that they don't know what the hell it is. That's far enough. Dude, what do you think that noise is? I think it's aliens saying hello. It may be an alien DJ. The aliens are hearing our music and responding in kind. Yeah. I knew this was happening inside, I just never said it. You just said it. I just said it. <laughs> Brett Hermanson says, what is your favorite type of storm? A quiet storm. I don't like lightning. They're just like accidents in the sky. Kind of like diarrhea. I've seen diarrhea in the sky. <laughs> I don't want to see diarrhea in the sky. No, you really don't. No, Believe I've had me diarrhea. when I say this. I've had diarrhea in the sky on a plane. <laughs> That's not good either. My last question is from Greg Benson. He says, how's it going? It's going great. Amazing. How's he doing? I'll tell him to call you. Yeah, he sounds like he's a very caring person. He is. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. You put out a solo album called She's Got a Big Posse. Yeah. What, what happened? It did really well, and her posse got bigger. That what did it? Was it big enough? No, she had a really big posse. Like, big, big posse. Big bada boom. That sounds promising. Later in your career, you became Professor X. Can you tell us your origin story? So that was kind of cool because I was already making records under Arabian Prince. And I had just bought this new sampler. And I was raring to use it and make something. But I couldn't because I just put a record out. So I'm watching Saturday morning cartoons and the X-Men cartoon came on. And during the episode, they said, Professor X, just kind of like that. And I was like, 
that was kind of cool. And I made a song around it and called myself Professor X. And then I told my buddies, let's start this thing. And then we became the X-Men and we started making electro records under that moniker. I wish my origin story was that interesting. What is your origin story? Why don't you tell me? I was raised on a farm in a pen with the other animals. Wow. <laughs> Um, do you want me to ask you about, like, what the place you're working for right now? Where am I? Do I have a job? Do you have a job? <laughs> Should I ask that? Glad you told me they're not paying me. <laughs> <laughs>